So why isn't a license from a jurisdiction such as Malta good for operating in Italy? Back in time, they could reasonably say, come to, to my place, come to Malta, come to Jib. Rules are, are clear and they are cast in stone and the infrastructure works, so you will be all set. They could say that back in time, also on grounds that uh, under the Treaty of Rome, under the principles of the European chart, if you are European and you're based anywhere in Europe, you are entitled, fully entitled, to uh, you know, move across European territory and offer services across the borders. They were not, however, taking into consideration the state monopolies on gaming and the fact that uh, at national level every country is very jealous of its taxing prerogatives. This was something that uh, initially was received very badly uh, in places like Malta. And so they are, very smartly, uh, repositioning themselves and, for instance, they are providing a, a full uh, package of services provided from Malta and uh, are aimed at the Italian market. The only thing being that if you have your servers in Malta, you, you will have to get that server connected in real time to the central control system in Italy. But because it's Malta, because it's Europe, you can keep your server there. So it's just about uh, re, re, uh, reviewing your, your plans and adapting to a situation that, like it or not, is happening. Uh, the LGA may or may not like what AMS is doing, AMS being the Italian regulator, or Argel is doing, the French regulator. But guess what? They will go their own way with or without the LGA. So they'd rather package new ways of uh, offering their services, which are still very competitive, price-wise and uh, skills-wise, know-how-wise, etc. Well, this is the issue. Of course, uh, you have to remember that gambling, uh, historically, has always been seen as a vice. Now this has developed into gaming, into entertainment, into games of skill, you know. It's no longer the vice of people, you know, locked up in a room, smoking, smoking and burning away all their earnings. Now it's become an, a form of entertainment. So I think, one, historically member states come from this tradition of banning. Secondly, they fear anything to do with the internet. I think a lot of people have this preconceived idea that it's out there, that it's online, and that we can't control it, and that it's automatically bad, so it's easier to ban. And thirdly, deep down, they want to protect the public purse. You know, they want to have the money from the revenues they generate. And this is why a lot of countries have monopolistic structures, because of course they will claim that you know, this is to protect consumers. But ultimately, it's a huge revenue for these member states. However, again, in accordance with EU law, you cannot restrict just for tax reasons. So what's the likelihood of jurisdictions such as Italy working together with jurisdictions that include multiple regions like Malta? For as much as I know of both uh, jurisdictions, they are very, uh, very uh, reliable jurisdictions. They are not the kind of, you know, banana island that one might be led to think simply because they do not carry proper European plates. They themselves stand uh, a chance to enter into um, some kind of operational arrangements with, with uh, countries like Italy. But uh, this is going to take time and uh, uh, as ever uh, we will, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a slow process. There, there have been uh, talks, there have been discussions about it. I am deeply convinced that it's just a matter of uh, setting a precedent. So in my view it will be a domino effect. So other such deals will follow and then, in the long run, we will get to a situation where even uh, the AGCC in Alderney or the uh, GSC in the Isle of Man will be able to join in and uh, enter into these agreements. If we look in the last 10 years at how it's developed, the gaming industry is developed, at least from a point of view of regulatory and, and legal, um, it's developed and we're moving slowly. Mindsets are changing. Uh, member states are realizing that they can't keep restricting because the market's there, consumers want it, and they're going to find a way to do it. 
And in fact, we've been inundated on a European level with illegal operators, black markets who hold no license whatsoever. So while you're going to keep restricting the market, you're not actually going to stop it. I very much believe that the crusade that we've been doing should continue because once you have a valid license from a country like Malta, it's very difficult from an EU perspective for member states to block those operators. It's not as easy as people think. So if they're complacent and say, right, I'm going to go ahead and have to get a license in every member state, then that will defeat the purpose and the fight for EU integration. And the, the more we continue doing it, the more this is going to happen. One wouldn't have thought 10 years ago that the European Commission would launch a consultation on this. Why? Because they're seeing that there's a problem. So something will be done. It just takes time. Um, so I think they should defend their license, get a license always from a robust regulatory regime because uh, it's much easier to do the crusade, the internal market crusade, and then fight the cause. The developments, hopefully, if there's no political will to do it on, on a legislative level, the court is slowly, slowly helping. So I, I don't think that the future is 27 national licenses. It looks like that at the moment. But if you look at them, they're slowly opening up their markets because they're realizing that if we, they don't do it, they're going to have to deal with illegal black, operate, black markets where consumers are not protected anymore. So what does the future hold for the jurisdictions that cover multiple geographic regions? Uh, honestly speaking, I, I see no great future for these jurisdictions, at least as far as it, Europe is concerned. Either they will make an effort to introduce themselves to the, the, uh, the, 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 the European regulators and to convince, that, to convince them that they are not just a very nice uh, location in terms of great infrastructure and uh, great facilities, etc but they are uh, willing to uh, you know, abide by uh, the European uh, regulations and, and, and legislation, not just in matters of uh, gaming, but more generally in matters of consumer protection, in matters of uh, compliance with uh, privacy law, uh, that kind of stuff. Until that happens, I don't see a situation where, you name it, f based in a, a nice Caribbean island, mm -hmm. may uh, strike a deal with, with, with Italy or with France or with any other European jurisdiction. This is not going to happen. For example, our system, we have um, a very open licensing and a system for online gaming. And we accept operators who are established in any EEA member state, but even in other jurisdictions which are approved by us. You know, we are pursuing bilaterals, we are trying to cooperate with member states to try and instill a bit more mutual trust because that's very much lacking. I think those outside the EU are at a disadvantage because, of course, they're not in the club. However, on the other hand, it's also, it seems to be easier for member states of the European Union to attack other member states because we find that the French or France are or the Austrians find it easier to attack our operators because there's this system of cooperation, whereas the black market seems to be totally disregarded. Um, however, I think these other jurisdictions, there's always a possibility of bilaterals, and like I said, if they become approved jurisdictions on a list, then again, the market widens and they're in as well. As you can see, there's a lot of gray area when it comes to the regulation of the iGaming industry in Europe. Operators who are working towards a global presence will absolutely face some licensing challenges in the near future. However, we all remain hopeful that over time the regulatory bodies will work closer together and unify, at least to a certain degree. Thanks for watching Viewpoint. This is Becky Lajiro with CalvinAir.com.